serious? Spider-Man is dominating at the box office, ladies and gentlemen. I know, shock horror, right? Globally, it has so far made $587 million. So whether there's a variant or not, people don't seem to care. People are going out in the millions to watch my favorite superhero kick ass at the box office. More importantly, kicking Marvel and Disney's asses into a tight corner of their stupid little boardroom. So yeah, guys, this is really, really cool. Overseas, where the new variant is even more of a concern in certain markets, particularly in Europe, yes, uh, Places like France are closing the borders to England. But, you know, once you close the borders, you can't stop a mutation from spreading anyway. The movie also made history, grossing $334.2 million for a global total of the sum of money I've already mentioned, even without China, which is pretty important. I do believe China will eventually get this film released in their country. China has a bit of a soft spot for Spidey, so that's really, really good. But don't forget now, China has kind of changed its mandates. They have certain requirements that they don't want to see in Western movies when they're transferred over to China. So I'm guessing Sony had to check those tick boxes before China approved the release for this movie. So here's Tim Rothman, the Sony Motion picture group chair ceo this week's historic results from all over the world and in the face of many challenges reaffirm the unmatched cultural impact that exclusive theatrical films can have when they are made and marketed with vision and resolve rothman said now what he means by that is it's a purely exclusive theatrical experience sony had the foresight not to have a streaming platform to promote their latest movies unlike wb with hbo max which obviously is going to suffer next week for the matrix resurrections why are they releasing a matrix film just after spider-man i guess wb don't really care about that film uh, that's the feeling i get the mixed social media reactions probably have some red flags in store for me and everybody else we could all go there it could be a visually great experience but the story maybe identity politics may creep in that's the one thing about spider-man no way home i can confidently say one or two niggly moments i questioned in my review this morning but what i will say hand over fist this film doesn't preach to you it doesn't shove politics down your throat it's good old-fashioned entertainment Give me my buttered popcorn, let me sit in front of the screen, let me laugh, cry, and do whatever for two and a half hours. And by the way, two and a half hours used wisely, just flies by, you wouldn't even know that. But you, you know what? This actually brings me to a very quick article here from uh, Screen Rant back in October. Eternals proves the MCU formula is broken, no matter who directs. Remember this whole hula baha they were making about Chloe Zhao, how she'd won this Oscar and and she'd already won the she'd already won the Oscar well while she was shooting this movie so it wasn't like she won the Oscar and then Kevin Feige grabbed her Kevin Feige had a really big misstep as well when he said the Eternals is the best movie they have ever seen they're they all gushing about it at Marvel like oh my god I don't think that's true I think that's just Kevin Feige's uh, hyperbole just going out of control because obviously he's got some very weird ways or weird plans going forward for the MCU now as I speak and good luck to him and Bob Chapek well look Susan Arnold is going to be taking over Bob Chapek's role it doesn't mean he's out they're going to be working hand in hand but Susan Arnold Will she be paying attention to how the MCU is actually crumbling at the moment? Nobody bought the Disney Plus TV shows because why would you continue a Marvel Cinematic Universe with really subpar TV shows? All woke, all have the same boring... Oh, it's just the same formula regurgitated again and again. 
nobody likes those shows. If I go to watch a Marvel film in future, I'm disregarding the TV shows. They, they mean nothing to me. They do not exist. And as soon as I can get neuralized again by the men in black, the better. But one thing that this article goes into as well, and something I want to add also, is the fact that you know, you pull a director like Ryan Coogler, who was this promising young film director, you plant him in something like Black Panther, there's already pressure on you to deliver that film, and he didn't really deliver with that film, I feel. Yes, the, it was very, it was more narrative substance over physical action. Even that reporter for the Irish Times, he got attacked on social media because he said, well, this superhero doesn't actually act like a superhero, he just talks all the time. And that reporter is actually correct because I want to go and superhero film. I want to see really well filmed action and nothing more. And one thing I've got to say about the MCU films, if you don't have the Russo brothers directing them, you get pretty average action on the screen. That John Favreau could not replicate his success from the first Iron Man movie. And then the Russo brothers came in with Captain America, Winter Soldier to really shake up that formula. They expanded that lightning in a bottle for some other successful entries, entries within the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And then where are we now? Yeah, we got the Marvels coming out. Nobody cares. We got Black Panther 2. Just recast Black Panther for Christ's sake. I make the man this big fuss about not recasting the role. James Bond gets recasted. Nobody cares about that. Recast a suitable actor for Black Panther. It's really simple. But you know what? Marvel and Disney keep tripping over themselves every single time. And if I were Kevin Feige, you would have to sit back and think, why has Spider-Man done so well when uh, three movie releases this year that we've had just tanked and bombed at the box office? They've all lost money, respectively. It's a fact. You can see it on the box office readings. So one thing that when I used to go to special preview screenings back in the day, and I don't hear about this now that much, is market research. You go to watch a film that has not been released to the public yet, and you get you stay behind in the auditorium, and then some representatives of the film company will just hand out questionnaires, and they'll take feedback from the crowd, and then take this back to the filmmakers who will then do reshoots. I don't, you all you hear about now is they're doing, re they're doing reshoots, but you don't know why they are doing it. Is it based on negative data they've received? And that's what Marvel has to do now with Disney. Now, now, I'm not rooting for Marvel and Disney, to be honest. I don't really care. Let them. Look, the MC formula, I've grown tired of it already. I think when we had that, <laughs> that misstep where they had to insert Captain Marvel between Infinity War and Endgame because they wanted people to go and see her movie. Yes, I was a mug. I went along to it. I probably helped to contribute to his $1 billion box office success. But it's a mediocre movie with a feminist pro message nobody cares and I gotta say I, I'm actually more keen I wish I could be a fly on the wall over at Warner Brothers because they've got like a really big nostalgia bait film coming out next year the Flashpoint movie The Flash whatever you want to call it you know you've got 1989 Michael Keaton as Batman returning who isn't salivating at that prospect oh my god it is going to be awesome. I cannot wait for a brand new, well, a proper trailer to drop, which I think will probably be at the end of January next year. I'm just guessing. And, and if it's any time before that, oh, please, Warner Brothers, please give us that goodness. So that's going to be an interesting film to watch. Is it going to be the same kind of box office global opening as Spider-Man No Way Home? Probably not, but it will do significantly well if it remains as a theatrical exclusive release. But I'm really, really happy for Spider-Man No Way Home. This is insane news. It proves once again, when you've got a very pop, well, I would say that Spider-Man is the most popular superhero IP ever. He's very untouchable and this kind of proves it. And it proves that Sony have a certain vision, a certain roadmap, and I hope that Amy Pascal and crew stick to it. Amy Pascal, for me, doesn't always have the best take on things, but I really do hope that, uh, I think they know what they're going to do. You remember that they almost had this falling out with uh, Disney and Marvel because Disney getting greedy, they wanted 50% or whatever Sony was earning from their Spider-Man movies. And then of course they had to backpedal and that became a 75 
25% to Sony and 25% to Marvel and Disney. So yeah, you know what? If I were Disney and Marvel, just sit back and just get rid of the stupid feminine identity agenda from your movies. You're driving customers away. People don't want to see them anymore. I'm actually more excited for a Sony Spider-Verse because you can do so many things. You can bring in, bring in Ben Riley. You can bring in Black Cat. Br bring in Silver Sable. Bring in these iconic characters in a live action expanded Sony Spider-Verse. That's what I want to see. So folks, were you aware of this news today? It is awesome news, isn't it? I love it. I can't wait to keep a track on this as it goes along. I reckon by this time next week, it could possibly make one billion dollars and if that happens that's going to be insane if we're already at this sum of 587 million already i reckon by next weekend we're near the billion dollar mark and that is going to be saying something variant or no variant so folks if you enjoyed this quick video today make sure to leave a like below slap that subscribe button right in the face because it's just as ugly as i am and i'll catch you on the next video